Hi everyone. Uh, we have several people in our family whose moods are severely affected by food to the extent that whenever we go anywhere we always take some fruit and some snacks in a bag with us just to keep everyone cheerful no matter what happens or how long it is till lunchtime. Now in our reading today, Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11, we're told that after 40 days without food in the wilderness, Jesus was hungry. Now, that sounds like quite an understatement, but we need to remember that on earth, Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully human. He was just as affected by hunger and physical needs and limitations as we are. He was just as debilitated by a lack of food. And we need to appreciate that impact of having the power to turn stones into bread after 40 days without food. There is no way that that isn't tempting, which is the point. Not that Jesus is somehow above all of these things, above physical needs and surrounded by holy light and unaffected by basic instincts. No, he's a man in the desert who hasn't eaten for over a month. Jesus was tempted to turn those stones into bread, not just because the devil pushed the idea at him, but because the idea was appealing. Jesus was presented in the desert with the same deception that Adam and Eve faced in the Garden of Eden by the snake. God must not love you if he's withholding things from you. You see something you like, take it, be your own boss. Now, Adam and Eve lived in a perfect world with their handmade soulmate and every good thing they could possibly want. Yet they ate the forbidden fruit. They gave in to that appealing temptation, to the lie of the devil. Whereas Jesus, alone in the wilderness, hungry and deprived of so much, heard the devil's deceit for what it really was. Using his power to fill his stomach would deny his dependence on and his unity with his father. He said no to that temptation which would have pushed his heavenly father away. He said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We know how vitally important food is. Without it, we die. We need to eat to give our bodies the strength and the nutrients and the energy we need. It's a basic necessity. Yet what Jesus is saying here in quoting Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 is that there's an even more fundamental necessity in our lives. God's word. After 40 days in the desert, when the devil tried to tempt Jesus into breaking his relationship with his father, Jesus was hungry physically, but spiritually he was full. He was sustained in his soul. His 40 days had been without physical food, but he had eaten regularly each day of his spiritual food. Jesus hadn't fasted for the sake of it, but was went to that isolated place, I think, to draw closer to his father without distraction. And so, though he was physically weak, he was spiritually strong and well-fed. Unlike Adam and Eve, who had been physically strong and nourished, but spiritually weak enough to be easily misled. So what do we learn from this? Firstly, that temptation comes for all of us, whether things are good or bad, whether we have a lot or a little. And temptation always has the same core to it. Take what you want and be your own boss. If we're to be sustained and strong enough to stand firm against temptation and see it for what it really is, the answer is God's word. Not just knowing the Bible, but living on it like we live on food, reading it to absorb it into our souls, to know God better through it and draw closer to him. As Jesus taught a few chapters later in uh, Matthew chapter 7, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. If we hunger for him, he will fill us so that we're not hungry for whatever temptations the devil offers us. That is Jesus's promise. 
how does he do it? How does he fill us? Through his word. So let's ask ourselves what our relationship is with the Bible. Is it something we snack on occasionally or something we turn to because we know we should? Or do we live on it and find our strength for each day from knowing God through its pages? Let me just pray for us. Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you in Matthew chapter 4 of Jesus' example of strength I mean, firstly and foremostly from his relationship with his Father. Lord, we know that that is what strength is. That is what it means to be nourished and sustained in our souls, is to be close to you. And we do that through your word. Lord, I pray, help us to read it. Help us to meditate on it. Help us to hear what you are saying through it. Lord, your word is the sword of the Spirit to cut into our hearts, to transform us and to bring us closer to you. So Lord, do your work and may we do our part, which is to open its pages and be willing and to seek you in what you have said. And Lord, we thank you that this fullness is your promise to us. So we take hold of that today, Lord, and say, fill us in our souls, feed us, feed that deep hunger so that temptation will be less tempting because we'll be full and satisfied people in your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen.